What is up, guys? We are back today for our Week 2 match of the GOT Grand Overseas Tournament. This week, we are taking on Frogs and Toads, who we will rematch in Week 4, and his default Cartanas. Now, he doesn't have a team logo, so I just put a picture of a frog there, uh, if you guys noticed. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. So, uh, this is actually going to be a rather quick video, uh, just because of the nature of the match and how it played out. Uh, I'm not going to reveal all my sets, uh, obviously I'm not going to have a team builder because a lot of things uh, didn't get revealed, so uh, let's just hop right into it, you guys are going to see how this match played out, uh, and then I'll explain a few things after, so uh, I'm going to lead off with my Choice Scarf Diggersby as he leads off with his Mamoswine, I'm going to get on out of there with a U-turn, even if he ice sharded me it was fine, uh, it meant that he still took damage and I can bring in my Gardevoir, but instead I'm going to go into my Thick Fat, uh, my now Thick Fat Porygon 2. As he goes for a knockoff, I expected him to have knockoff on his Mamoswine, uh, specifically for Porygon 2 and for uh, Slowbro. Uh, but I'm going to throw out a foul play. It's going to do quite a bit da of damage. He's going to go into a Shaman. I'm going to go for a Recover. Probably should have gone for a Toxic on that turn, as uh, he's going to now Toxic me, putting me on a timer. And uh, that's not going to be very good for Shaduck over here. Uh, shout out to Shoddy for the nickname for Porygon 2. Uh, but I'm going to stay in. I'm going to take a Seed Flare. Not too well. And I'm going to get up a Trick Room, uh, and this was the idea behind this team was to uh, get up a Trick Room and do some damage against his faster stuff. Here I'm going to recover against his Mammoth Swine. He's going to make a nice play and uh, actually double back into his Shaman. I probably should have predicted that and gone for a Toxic again, but he is going to bring it in on the foul play. Very nice play on my opponent's part, and uh, I'm going to get off this damage. 11%, not too much, and I see that he's Rocky Helmet, so that's really good information. Uh, we're going to get uh, Toxic Poisoned, and I'm going to miss my Toxic as uh, he gets off a of synthesis, so he's now at full, and Porygon 2 is dead, so my main check to his physical attackers is now gone, <laughs> and that's not very good. Now I'm going to bring in Titar, set up the sand, uh, shuts down his synthesis, uh, as well as weakening his seed flare against me, and uh, I'm going to get my rocks. He's going to miss a toxic, kind of mix up for my miss, and uh, I am going to... Uh, now go for Stone Edge and see that he's fully physically defensive. The Rocky Helmet kind of gave that away, but I expected him to run some uh, Spadef specifically for Gardevoir, but he did not. And now I'm going to pull a switch out into my Sweeper Cobalion, Cerberust. Uh, Shoutouts to Gareth once again for this nickname. He's going to go for Synthesis in the sand, as I said before, weakens it. And I have an Air Balloon. I'm not afraid of Earth Power. I've seen three of his moves. He's now going to reveal the Air Slash as I go for a Swords Dance. And I am faster than him. I EV to be faster than uh, his base 100s. And uh, I'm going to go for a Rock Polish on the following turn as he's going to go into his Mamoswine to sack it. Very good play. Uh, I'm going to be up to plus two. Great position for me right here. Uh, I'm just going to go for the uh, the Iron Head on this turn and knock out his Mamoswine. One of his biggest threats gone. Uh, however, now he can easily revenge me with his Latios, uh, his Mega Latios, uh, being that I can't knock him out with one Iron Head. Uh, he's going to Mega Evolve. I'm going to go for the Iron Head. I'm going to play off the flinch. And what do you know? I get the flinch. <laughs> and his Latios is now gone to another Iron Head. There we go. That goes down. Next up, he's going to bring in his Rotom. And uh, at this point, I didn't apologize for the flinch, it's 30%, but uh, right here, I probably should have apologized, get a crit close combat, that probably mattered if he was fully defensive, if he wasn't, then it might not have. Now he goes into his Tornadus, this thing is too frail to take a plus two Iron Head, it's going to go straight down, and uh, now all he's left with is his Shaman and his uh, Diggersby. His Shaman's actually going to live this close combat, and uh, he's going to knock me out with a, uh, a Seed Flare on the following turn. Just kidding, he misses. And uh, that is going to be the whole game, guys. Right here, I was like, you know what? Screw this game. That is ridiculous. Uh, at this point, my Scarf Diggersby or my Slowbro could have won. Uh, after I, j I just had to knock out a Shaman with my Gardevoir and essentially just win with my Slowbro. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the whole game. Uh, Cobalion once again getting the thumbnail. As you can see, that was a very quick match. We're only four minutes deep into the video. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time to prep for this match. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. And uh, my opponent was uh, constantly asking me when I wanted to play. Uh, nothing wrong with that. He was just doing his job. That's what I require people to do in the GOT is, is communicate with their opponents. He did a very good job at that. I kind of put off the match until uh, pretty late. Uh, it was actually it was played earlier today, but um, my building wasn't that great. I think the air balloon Cobalion with uh, double dance was a good call, um, and I could have uh, definitely put in some work with this set. But I wasn't well enough prep prepped for a shaman. I don't really have anything for a shaman realistically. Uh, as you guys saw, he packed the air slash specifically for a uh, I was gonna bring a to this game, but look at his team. He has a Mamoswine, a Tornadus T, a Megalodios, uh, and his two other members I'm about to bring up right here. 
our Silvali and Staraptor. I was kind of surprised not to see the Silvali because he doesn't have a true answer to Mega Gardevoir spamming Hyper Voice. All I would need is a Tailwind up and his entire team would drop, uh, especially that his, um, his Shaman was max special defense. I could just pack Hyper Voice and Psyshock and everything would go down. Uh, or in Trick Room, if I made my Gardevoir slow enough to uh, outspeed his uh, his faster stuff, like Shaman, like um, Megalodios, uh, Tornadus T, uh, then I could definitely put in work with that if his Diggersby was Scarfed, which I'm not sure if it was or not, because I was at plus two speed with um, Cobalion, and I did outspeed his Diggersby. So I have no idea whether or not it was Scarfed. Uh, the bad part about this is that I uh, didn't get to see a lot of his sets, being his Rotom, uh, I know that it was probably fully defensive by the way he said uh, nice uh, when I crit it. Uh, I didn't get to see his uh, his Tornadus, so I'm going to calc it later to see what exactly it was. His Latios, I know how much damage it, I did to it, so I can calc that, but I didn't get to see any of his moves. The only Pokemon I got to see use moves were Shaman and Mamoswine, and he actually got to see three, three of my Pokemon use moves, so he has that slight advantage. The good part about this game was that I came out with a 5-0 win, so I will take it. Um, we are now 2-0 uh, with a plus 7 differential. Uh, we have to take on Ojama next week, uh, who has another team I'm not too excited to face. Uh, he's, he's got some pretty big threats, I would say, uh, to my team. One specifically that I'm looking at uh, that is, is quite scary for me, and I don't know how I'm going to manage it. Uh, I guess I'll have to find a way, but either way, um, we are 2-0 up, so now I only need pretty much one more win with a good differential, and I'm pretty much um, locked in for playoffs as long as I don't mess up massively. Uh, from here till the end, and uh, Ojama and um, Ojama has a loss, uh, so does Survive against me, uh, and now Frogs and Toads also has a loss, so I am the only undefeated player in the conference, in the uh, group, excuse me, um, in our group three of the Alola conference, which means I should be able to make playoffs, uh, the playoff bracket, no matter what, uh, as long as I pull out one more win, so that's what I'm going to be shooting for, uh, just one more win in the last three matches, and uh, that means that I can take it easy a little bit and actually manage the GOT that I was uh, during the draft and during the first week. I kind of slacked off a little bit this week, uh, definitely needed a little bit of downtime uh, because of everything that I've been overloaded with. As you guys know, the, uh, the GBA power rankings, uh, the multiple leagues that I'm a part of, uh, trying to upload for my own channel. I tried to uh, record a video live the other day and it was going pretty well. I actually beat Stahl uh, with a really uh, unfavorable matchup and my computer decided to restart uh, while I was at while I was nearing the end of my recording so I lost everything. So that was really really annoying. Um, nothing I could do about that so I, I kind of just gave up and I was like you know what screw lives for now let's focus on lean content and that's what you guys have been getting so uh, I hope you're enjoying it you guys seem to be enjoying it I'm getting a lot of good uh, good positive feedback um, a lot of good a good number of views about one-sixth of my subscriber count is watching my videos uh, which is more than I can say for people like PewDiePie and <laughs> you look at these bigger YouTubers and they don't have that kind of consistency. Um, one in six is actually pretty solid. I'd like to be one in three or one in two, but like you can't ask for everything. Not everybody's going to watch every single one of your videos, which I understand. I fully understood that when I started YouTube. So that's pretty much the, uh, the match, guys. Uh, Frogs and Toads does not have a channel, nor does he have a logo. So I'm not able to <clears throat> excuse me, link you to anything in the description down below. Uh, but I will leave a link to the uh, global, uh, the grand, I keep saying global, the grand overseas tournament channel. We've been uploading power rankings there, uh, and we're going to start on week three uploading. I haven't told the admins uh, yet this, but we are going to start on week three uploading live games that we're going to live com. I'm going to be a part of a few of them, but we're going to get some admins on some important games because now that we have two weeks done, uh, some games are more important than others, and we're going to get to see matchups that we will only ever see once unless they repeat in playoffs. So that's uh, that's what we're going to be doing on the channel. It's going to be really fun. We just got to finish up with power rankings first, and then we're going to get started on that. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, I would have liked to do player interviews. I don't know if that's going to be a thing. Uh, I might just do uh, returning players that have a shot at making playoffs uh, to shorten the list uh, because right now we're on 20 people that we would have to interview, which is quite a bit. So uh, we'll see about that. But anyway, guys, that is my week two game. I know I spent more time talking about other stuff than the game itself, but I hope you guys still enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, of course, make sure to go check out the GOT channel, like I said, and I will see you guys very soon. Ciao.